Great news everybody, Xena has been open sourced, 100% made in Golang, yes that includes the user interface, you can see it uh, right here. It also has a work in progress uh, web support uh, through WebAssembly. Here I'm just gonna walk you through the source code, just to get you familiar if you want to make any contributions of your own. Let's start with this C2 server. First we initialize the private keys of the server, then we initialize the database and then we start the server. In this case the database of choice is SQLite, which means that you don't have to do much of configuration. You are also free to basically plug in any other database that you want. Further on in the server.start method, basically we are initializing some routes, uh, quite simple stuff. In the database we are doing basically just the initialization of the connection and we are doing migration. Then we have repos which basically do queries to the, the database. Quite simple stuff right here. And then we have models which define our database schema. And in the core we have some things about crypto and um, uh, pops up channels that allow for real-time communication between the agents and the C2 server. And the primary logic is happening in the controllers. So here we handle some things about the agents, etc. Uh, quite amazing stuff is happening here in the messages controller where we have uh, message subscribe we are, we are basically the agent is going to make a HTTP request to the server without the timeout it never ends and the server when it has message to send to the agent is going to write it down the connection and flush it uh, however it's not going to end request it's just gonna keep sending in the data So that's pretty much high level overview of the C2 server. Now let's go to the agent. First of all, we are going to initialize the agent that is going to get some basic information about the uh, environment, such as hostname, CPUs, etc. Generate some uh, deterministic paths where we can save the agent's ID and the agent's private key. Because remember, all of the communication between the C2 and the agent is end-to-end -end encrypted. Then we are going to do a uh, patching of variables because uh, all of the binaries of the agent when they are compiled are going to be put in one folder and they are not usable by themselves. The UI when you go uh, to build a new agent is going to get your configuration that you just made and uh, patch the binary with your configuration. We're gonna drop uh, the agent, it's going to persist the agent. Then we initialize the C2 API uh, library. Remember the API library is separate and it's open sourced and you can make your own agent for Xena. Um, and have it handle all of the communication parts so that you can focus on the agent functionality. And then we are gonna initialize the main loop of the agent. Um, basically if the agent, agent ID is not configured we are going to identify ourselves to the C2 server and then if the real-time communication is not enabled, we're going to call an endpoint that's gonna just fetch the current messages, we're going to interpret them and uh, make a response. In the case of real-time communication, we are going to subscribe to receive messages and then we have a um, couple of callbacks and here it's quite simple, we interpret the message once more and then we issue a response. Um, so that's high level overview of the agent itself. 
and then let's look at the UI. UI is uh, powered by the fine framework for building graphical user interfaces in Golang. It works on web, on desktop and mobile. It has uh, layouts, so at the moment we have only one main layout. It has some effects uh, like a gradient, it has uh, pages um, that we can see like uh, the engagement page which in code is named battlefield. We have files where you can download um, files that have been uploaded by the agent. Um, we have pipeline settings, uh, shop, etc. And then we have uh, views that are being used by the um, pages. And then we have the state that's basically some of the uh, variables that are shared across uh, the application. And then we have Xena tools is basically just an uh, JSON that you, you're supposed to modify if you want to add your own tools to the uh, security pipelines. Um, basically, if you made your own agent that has um, its own set of tools, you can put those tools here. Um, those tools um, might not necessary, necessarily be um, functions that um, are coded into your agent. They might be external tools as well. So that's pretty much it for the UI. Um, then we have some um, common things like in the common we have the agent builder uh, We have the some debug helpers uh, We have some things that allow us to manipulate the machine such as uh, file system execute shell commands, uh, etc. deal with registers then we have middleware um, primarily at the moment this is used only by the C2 API. Uh, however, it is externalized into a dedicated folder so that if we or you want to build additional services to support the Dixena framework, you can reuse some of these middlewares that handle some of the common functionality. Then we have a patch package uh, which handles binary patching of the agent binaries. Then there is some juicy stuff. Basically, all of these are tools that you can even use um, outside of Xena. Just import them into your agents uh, to handle things um, such as port scanning, um, brute force attacks, etc. It's just some common functionality that um, not just agents but many other tools uh, for cybersecurity can use. Then we have some helper methods. And then we have the offsec module. It's basically um, how you execute pipelines at the moment. The code is not the prettiest, it's just one big function and it handles the execution of the pipeline generating the response. Um, that's pretty much it about the about the framework itself. Uh, you feel free to contribute to explore the source code. Don't forget to join us on Discord, don't forget to follow me on X and like the video and give the project a star, it is free to do so.